So Elgo reached out to me um, to see if I wanted to review their new Centuri Carbon. It's their first Core XY 3D printer. I said, sure. So let's go ahead and take a look at the specs. As I mentioned, this is a Core XY motion system. It has a build volume of 256 square, a max speed of 500 millimeters per second. It has a hardened steel nozzle with a max temperature of 320 degrees Celsius. It has an AC heated bed for fast heating. It is fully enclosed and has temperature monitors. It has a five inch touchscreen, a built-in air filter, and more importantly, it poops. For full transparency, Elegoo did ask me to compare this against the Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon. However, in my opinion, I believe that this printer should be compared against the P1S. But that's just my opinion. Now let's continue on to the setup. As you can see, unboxing is pretty straightforward. Um, we're going to remove these three screws that hold the bed down during shipping, which is kind of common now for some of these Core XYs. Removing foam from this uh, poop chute in the back, and then snip off this excessively large cable tie that's holding this uh, cardboard on. Um, by the way, you don't get any snips, so provide your own. Now you're going to want to be very, very careful about removing this tape. It's super sticky and you do not want to ruin your connector by any means. So gently pull on it and then you're going to take the ribbon cable and plug it in back of your display and your display simply slides on and latches. This does have Wi-Fi, so make sure you update your firmware. Then it has this uh, small spool holder that you just screw on to the side. It's a little flimsy. Now we're just going to remove some of the plastic film. And once everything's powered on, it does go through a self-check. Now be warned, the self-check does take over 20 minutes to complete. And once that's done, you are almost ready to print. Well, almost. Again, you want to double check for firmware updates. And there actually was one, and that actually fixed a bug that I had. I was getting failures on sending jobs to the printer. So always do your updates. And that leads us to today's video sponsor, PCB Way. Are you looking for a PCB manufacturer? Are you looking for rigid, flexible PCBs? Are you looking for them to assemble them for you? Well, they can. And they also offer other services such as 3D printing, injected molding, and CNC. Heck, they even have a community section where you could buy a project and assemble it on your own. If you're looking for any of these services, please reach out to PCB Way. Now, the slicer of choice here is Elegoo Slicer. Well, it's a rebranded Orca Slicer, which is actually a good thing, but when we go into monitor the printer, this is all you get. Yeah, it is. It's Clipper, but honestly, you may not know, but yeah, that's it. That's all you get to see. So I also went to the web interface, same thing. You do not see any, anything more, which is kind of disheartening if you ask me, but sometimes less is more, especially when it comes to support. First layers went down like glass. I mean, but so far, first impressions are looking really good. And as you can see, it is a fast printer as well. This is Polymaker's Polylite PLA Pro, and it's going down silky smooth. Currently, I am printing a preloaded file that's pre-sliced that's on the printer itself. This is a trash can that you can mount to the back of the machine for the poop chute. It will collect it, and then you can just dump it out. But I think that they should have provided some longer screws to mount this because you're using existing screws that are pretty small. Now let's go ahead and do the test prints. Now let's take a look at some prints. Of course, we got the Benchy. Well, I think there is a, yeah, we're not gonna really look at that because it's being boycotted for some stupid reason. 
I think it's about time we switch this up and get rid of benchies. So we're going to do the Hot Mix Clock Spring 3D Torture Toaster. This is a torture test and right here you just pop up the toast. That's one of the tests and the gears is another. And we have our overhangs here from 80 to 10 to zero, whatever. And you see the overhangs are pretty darn nice. And then we undo the gears on the other side and we have our, um, our tolerances. We got 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, and 0.2. I have never had the 0.2 work before. So the model came out really nice, a nice clean bottom. Yeah, all I could say is that this came out really, really well. So let's go ahead and put this off to the side. And of course we got the standard Buddha. Yep, the Buddha is uh, preloaded on basically every Elegoo printer. And this came out just as nice as any of the other ones that take two or three times as long. So again, no problems with this print at all. And this is another pre-sliced file from Elegoo. This is their um, trash bin, it's a Centauri carbon. And wow, this came out really nice. There is a bit of ringing slash ghosting, but overall a really nice print. Everything just came out really nice. And you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna take this and attach it to the back of the printer. Let's go ahead and do that right now. Since this isn't a multi-material system, very little poop actually comes out. So what we're gonna do is now dump my poop into the trash can here. And now we're gonna mount it to the back. And how do we do that? Well, we're just going to loosen these two screws on the back. Now you have to kind of loosen them almost all the way. And, um, and then this will slide on and then you can just tighten them if you so choose. But I believe that Elgu should have sent longer screws to do this because it's just barely hanging on. So I went on to things.com and I found this planter pot by Indirect Shapes. And this first layer looks amazing. Very nicely done. Have had no issues with the first layer whatsoever. And you can see how nice and clean this print is. There's a little bit of stringing, but not much at all. I mean, it is done rather nice. And this was done in base mode with only one wall. And you can see it's kind of translucent. So I decided to print another one and that has two walls on it. Now this is the same exact print just done with two walls to add some rigidity to it and everything came out really nice. Actually, I think it came out better for this one. For some reason, there's a lot less stringing happening here and look how nice and smooth all this is. It is amazing. Inside looks just as nice. And again, this added a little bit more rigidity by doing the two walls. So I made a switch to some purple PLA Pro from Polymaker, and this is a preloaded sliced file of the Eiffel Tower. And this came out really nice, especially for its size. I mean, this, this looks great. I know that this is really close up and you're gonna be like, well, maybe, but you gotta remember this is FDM. So this, <laughs> this, is really really nice and uh the camera really doesn't give it justice whatsoever really nice solid print and to honor goatzilla you know saying that i print useless junk so i'm going to print out some death racer parts for my wife's death racer this is the new piranha death racer by offset maker lab it's based off the michael badley design these files have been reworked and specifically designed to work with the new Big Tree Tech kit for this. And you will find a nice tutorial here on how to actually build it. I think it's a job well done. Good job, Offset Maker Lab. Now this is part of the body, the shell, so to speak here. And this was done at 0.12 layer height. And look how nice and clean this print is. Very nice and clean. You got this little line here, but I think that's part of the file itself because I printed actually three of them and it showed up every time. Definitely not a problem with the printer itself, but you got a little bit of ghosting here, but not bad at all. Very, very clean print. So I decided to print it again, like I said, just to verify. Now this is the wife's color. She's doing purple and pink. You can see a little bit of that ringing there in the same spot and that same line. So definitely the file itself, but, and that gets actually covered anyways, but look how nice and clean this print is. Very nice. And just to prove it, uh, you can see that there's no like line here in this part where you might see a line, very clean print. 
So yeah, I'm very, very impressed with the print quality of this printer. Now it's comparison time. Let's take a comparison against the X1C and see how it stacks up. Now, frankly, I really don't understand why I'm going to even compare the LU Centuri Carbon to the Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon. The X1 Carbon literally came out, pre-sales began in August 10th, 2022. We're talking almost two and a half years ago. And sure, they do look a little bit different, but they're striking in similarities, and I get that. So let's go over some of just the specs really quick. Both of these have a Core XY motion system. Both are 256 by 256 by 256 square. The shell is steel. And, you know, the, the, it's a mixture of uh, aluminum and glass for both of them for the construction. They both definitely poop. But only one, which is the X1 Carbon, is able to do multi-material. It's the first thing I asked with LEU is if the Centuri Carbon would do multi-material. And they said no. Who knows if that will change in given time. And then inside of Centuri Carbon, you'll see that uh, we have all stainless steel rods. While we go into the X1 Carbon, we have a mixture of uh, stainless steel rods and carbon fiber. So that is one of the differences with the motion system. You notice that the part cooler is on the back versus the auxiliary part cooler is on the side for the X1 Carbon. The Centuri Carbon has a, uh, if I would call it, an old school filament run-on sensor on the side of the machine versus on the, the tool head itself. The X1 Carbon has it right on the tool head, which makes, to me, a lot more sense for that type of system. Both the Elegu and the Bamboo X1C have filtration systems, but um, whether they're adequate or not is to be determined. Both do come equipped with hardened steel nozzles for more abrasive filaments. The LU has an AC heated bed, which will allow it to get up to temperature pretty darn quickly, while the Bamboo X1C does not. It's just a typical slow heated bed. The Elgu has a uh, camera to help monitor your print progress and it does time lapse. It does not have any AI functionality. For instance, I did have a print failure because the, the spool had a, um, let's just say a little bit of a jam on it and the print failed, which the Bamboo has a, its own camera and it has AI detection and spaghetti detection. And I've had it work pretty reliably. As far as auto leveling, the Elegoo just basically has a string gauge that has four pressure sensors for, with a proprietary algorithm to allow for a really nice bed leveling. On the other hand, the X1C has dual auto bed leveling system, checks increased reliability with the LADAR and analog four sensors, cross check and uh, for extra layer redundancy and bed leveling. A lot more advanced than the Elegoo. The X1C came standard with this uh, cold plate that you had to use glue on. And it also had this engineering side. The Elegoo came with this dual sided PEI sheet. And one side is specifically for a PLA, TPU, ABS, patchy carbon fiber. And it's more of like a higher temp. And the other side is more for just PLA. I mean, this thing really sticks well. I did not have one, one print come off. Really nice PEI sheet. And as mentioned, the uh, filament spool holders on the side for the LU, but on the X1C, it's right there on the back. I really don't understand that, but both of them have poop collection on the back too, so there's that as well. The Elgu's hot end reaches at 320C, while the Bamboo Labs X1C reaches a max temperature of 300C. And with the motion system, they're both identical. They both go just as fast, and so that's just what it is. Now the touchscreen on 
The Elegoo is just a little bit bigger at a 5 inch, while the X1C is a 4.3 inch display. Now, when I created a thumbnail for this, I said there's no comparison. Because you know what? There really isn't, in my opinion. Because we are talking about the X1 Carbon without the AMS is still going for $1,149. While the Elgu Centuri Carbon is scheduled to be around $500. So you are looking at less than half the cost for this machine. With the print quality that I've gotten out of this machine from two weeks of testing is just absolutely amazing. So yeah, there are going to be the people in the comments, but the bamboo is better, blah, blah, blah. You know what? I really don't care. You know, if someone is looking for a machine that just prints Prints absolutely fantastic out of the box. I would just highly recommend this. You know, Elgu has done a great job. They actually postponed the delivery of these machines to make sure that they just tightened everything up and it just proves a point of how nice this thing is printing. With all that being said, though, both of these machines are running proprietary hardware. And that's the only thing that kind of scares me is, well, what is going to be the future of these machines. How long are they going to support these machines? And you know, I am a fan of both. You know, having a open source because then you typically can get the parts whenever you want. Here, when you have a closed source, both of them basically are you have proprietary hardware on both these machines. You know, proprietary nozzles and stuff like that. You know, the aftermarket community is starting to get up with some of the aftermarket stuff on here but then you know <laughs> with bamboo right now they're starting to close things up a bit so that is my really the only concern and that is with both these machines is proprietary stuff with that being said five hundred dollars for a system like this i think elgu has really done a fantastic job and of course i encourage you to watch other people's content because their opinions may differ from my own so if you are looking to purchase this, um, please um, you know, help support the channel. Affiliate links will be down below, and it costs you absolutely nothing more. I thank you for tuning in to Tripod's Garage. Please have a wonderful day, evening, or weekend, or whenever you decide to watch this video. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll catch you the next time on Tripod's Garage.